In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Tonight we begin the Holy Three Days, the Sacred Triduum, the days in which the mystery of our redemption is commemorated and celebrated. Tonight, with the Lord's Supper, we give thanks for the Eucharist, for the command to serve and love one another, and we give thanks that Christ's saving sacrifice is available to us in the sacramental gifts, and that we are able to serve one another with love and commitment. So let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries as we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church as sacrifice, new for all eternity, the banquet of love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, The month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first month of the year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbour, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honour of the Lord. That night, I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and you shall escape destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord, and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is, a new, is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It was before the festival of the Passover and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the, who were his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hand and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from table, removed his outer garment and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, if I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, No one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. 
If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of heaven's glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of endless glory. This Mass of the Lord's Supper is the beginning of an emotional roller coaster in which we will plummet to great depths and then rise again to phenomenal heights. This night, the Church invites us to stay with the story until it finishes. The celebration of this Mass begins this Thursday evening but it won't finish until the end of the Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday night. This might sound strange, but consider when you will next receive the final blessing as you would normally receive it at the end of the service. Tonight, there is no usual end to the Mass. The priest and those serving will process to the altar of repose and leave the Blessed Sacrament there instead of returning it to the tabernacle. The liturgy will end in silence without the priest giving a blessing. Tomorrow, in the liturgy of the Passion, the ministers will come in in silence and fall prostrate before the sanctuary. And then the priest will begin the liturgy without the usual introductory greetings and prayers. At the end, without the priest giving a blessing, we will again leave in silence. On Holy Saturday, during the day, there is no Mass celebrated anywhere in the world. Even the Easter Vigil in the evening starts in an unusual way with the lighting of the new fire. But that long and beautiful liturgy brings the whole mystery to its conclusion with great rejoicing. At last, the Easter blessing and the special dismissal that concludes the Easter Vigil will be particularly solemn and joyful. So over the next three days, we are called to walk the whole awfulness and majesty of the story with Jesus, reacting in similar ways to the disciples and Mary. On this holy night, the Church invites us to be present and close to Jesus for this one liturgy that is spread over three days, the Holy Three Days, the Sacred Triduum. Yes, we will leave the Church building, but we take the story and the mystery with us and we relive it in our own daily lives. The liturgy of this evening is full of symbols. The Lord has many messages for us, his disciples, this night. We hear about betrayal. We listen to the gospel account and wonder, amazed, along with the other disciples, as Jesus gets up 
from the table and washes the feet of those he calls friends. We hear as Simon Peter refuses to have his feet washed and how Jesus responds to him. We learn from Jesus what it means to wash one another's feet. The time is quickly running out for Jesus as his hour approaches. Meaning that right up until the end, Jesus is trying to teach us, the disciples, how to truly be Christians. The disciples must all the time be playing catch up to Jesus and the many things he says and does. This time he explicitly asks, do you understand? But he does not wait for an answer. Instead, he goes on to explain. He has given us an example so that we may copy what he has done. Who among us is greater than our Lord Jesus? The answer is that none of us is. And if that is so, then we are all given this task to wash one another's feet in service and humility. This is one of the Lord's final teachings to the disciples. This is an important lesson for all of us. We are all called to wash the feet of one another. This act of service is truly a gospel imperative. In Jesus' day, it was an everyday thing to wash feet because people wore open sandals back then on the dusty roads. Servants would do this and we can be sure it was not one of their favorite tasks. Certainly, we have to wash our own feet today, but there is perhaps not that sense of necessity. And as for washing someone else's feet, that still seems menial and unpleasant. So as Jesus gave us this command to wash one another's feet, how are we nowadays to interpret it? How and why are we to wash another person's feet today? This act and gesture of Jesus, in a way, symbolizes the whole of Jesus' ministry and sacrifice. It points to the cross. It is, it is an insight into the nature of God. It is a rebuke to our own notions of entitlement and self-importance. It is a revelation of how we should relate to one another and what reveals true authority and status. We are not called to build the kingdom of God using bricks and mortar, but instead to do acts of kindness, of simplicity, of service, like washing feet. Let us remember that these acts of generosity are the stuff of the kingdom of God and that none of us is too great or mighty or good that we dare excuse ourselves from what the Lord wants. He tells us so, plainly. Tonight, because of the precautions we must take still in the COVID pandemic, I, as your priest, won't actually be washing parishioners' feet in that ceremonial gesture. 
And this is only the second time in my ministry that that has happened. The first being on Holy Thursday last year for the same reason. But we have heard the account of what Jesus did at the Last Supper. We have heard his command to serve and to love one another. As we go to the altar of repose this evening, let us spend some time in prayer during this shortened watch, considering how best we may serve our neighbor, how we can show love and concern, not only for our family members and friends, but more widely, as Jesus has taught us. Let us hear the Lord speak to us. You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. We belong to the body of Christ. In his name, let us pray to the Father for the church and for the world. Let us pray for Christian leaders of all denominations, for the healing of old wounds, for forgiveness and openness to the Holy Spirit, which alone can make us one. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for places where there is poverty, overcrowding and neglect. And for people living in the midst of war and violence and those still struggling with the coronavirus. Support and encourage all in need and help us to be generous with the resources you have given us. Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. We pray for the areas of our own lives which need to be remade in Christ. May God's uncompromising love inspire us to be reconciled one with another and may we learn what it means to be servants of our Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick. In particular, we pray for Father Howard Cox and his family. We pray too for all who have asked for our prayers. May the healing power of our Lord strengthen all in need. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. We pray.
praise you, Lord God, for all who have gone before us in faith. May we with them be brought to eternal life. Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. The, Spirit is with us. the peace of the Lord be always with you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. 
accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end. We are clay. Holy and gracious God, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Hear us, merciful Lord, through Christ, accept our sacrifice of praise, and by the power of your word and Holy Spirit, sanctify this bread and wine, that we who share in this holy sacrament may be partakers of Christ's body and blood, who, when his hour had come, on the night before he went up to the cross to make full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all his one sacrifice of himself, that is, on this night, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying,
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, in obedience to his command, we commemorate and celebrate his saving passion and death, his mighty resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we eagerly await his coming again in glory, we thank you that by your grace alone you have accepted us in Christ. And here we offer you a spiritual sacrifice, holy and acceptable in your sight. Through Christ receive this our duty and service, and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may, by your Holy Spirit, be one body in Christ and serve you in unity and peace. In your grace and mercy, bring us to the joy of your eternal kingdom. With Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, St. John, and all the company of the redeemed, may we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Almighty Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father in heaven, Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry to you by day, but you do not answer. And by night also I take no rest. But you continue holy, you that are the praise of Israel. In you our forebears trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and they were saved. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, the scorn of all and despised by the people. Those that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out their lips at me and wag their heads, saying, he trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him deliver him if he delights in him. But you are he that took me out of the womb, that brought me to lie at peace on my mother's breast. On you have I been cast since my birth. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. O oh, go not from me, for trouble is hard at hand, and there is none to help. Many oxen surround me, fat bulls of Bashan close me in on every side. They gape wide their mouths at me, like lions that roar and rend. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is like melting wax. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue clings to my gum. My hands and my feet are withered, and you lay me in the dust of death. For many dogs are come about me, and a band of evildoers hem me in. I can count all my bones, they stand staring and gazing upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. O Lord, do not stand far off. You are my helper. Hasten to my aid. Deliver my body from the sword, my life from the power of the dogs. O oh, save me from the lion's mouth, and my afflicted soul from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my companions. In the midst of the congregation, will I praise you. O oh, praise the Lord, all you that fear him. Hold him in honour, O oh, seed of Jacob. And let the seed of Israel stand in awe of him. For he has not despised nor abhorred the poor man in his misery nor did he hide his face from him, but heard him when he cried. 
From you springs my praise in the great congregation. I will pay my, my vows in the sight of all that hear you. The meek shall eat of the sacrifice and be satisfied. And those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May their hearts rejoice forever. Let all the ends of the earth remember and turn to the Lord. And let all the families of the nations worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he shall be ruler over the nations. How can those who sleep in the earth do him homage, or those that descend to the dust bow down before him? But he has saved my life for himself, and my posterity shall serve him. This shall be told of my Lord to a future generation, and his righteousness declared to a people yet unborn that he has done it. 